Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Greetings to all of you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. God willing, we're back to our weekly English lesson. You remember we missed a couple of weeks' lessons due to um, other commitments to different uh, programs um, and we'll continue our today's lesson from where we have paused our last lesson. You remember our last lesson was on the Holy Liturgy and that was part four and today I want to continue the fifth part of the same lesson and under this lesson <clears throat> I'm going to cover on how we can benefit from the Holy Liturgy. The Holy Liturgy is the essence of group prayer and worship in our Orthodox Church in the church where the liturgy is celebrated in the house of God and the door to heaven. It's the home of the angels and the meeting place of the saints. While liturgy is being celebrated, the angels, the archangels, the seraphim, and the cherubim all come to attend in heavenly arrays of great glory around the altar. At the awesome moment when the priest invites the Holy Spirit, he comes in power, amid the joy of the angels, and transforms the bread and the wine into the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in an unfathomable mystery that the human mind cannot penetrate. That's why the time we spend in church during liturgy is a moment of heaven on earth. This glory that surrounds us is hidden from our eyes at that time and since we are still of the human flesh, However, many have been found worthy of looking upon this glory. They saw it and the witness to it, and their witness is really true. In spite of all these glories that we experience, many say that they do not benefit from attending the divine liturgy. In their uh, efforts to benefit from attending liturgy, they repeat, um, different questions like uh, which starts with how do I benefit from attending a liturgy? So that's what we are explaining tonight. But before we can explain how we can benefit from attending the divine liturgy, we have to discuss what hinders our 
our driving uh, advantage from the prayers of liturgy. We we can we can see that uh, using the reasons why we do not feel that we benefit from liturgies. Uh, the first reason why we do not feel that we benefit from the liturgy is we are arriving late to the church. The one who comes late to the church spends only one hour or part of an hour at the end of the liturgy. Uh, he or she um, lives having deprived himself or herself of Holy Communion because they came late. They are also deprived themselves of enjoying the readings, the hymns, and the profound spiritual prayers of liturgy, which lifts the soul to heaven and give it rest from um, its problems and its preoccupations. The brief time they spend in church does not allow them to get rid of their worldly concerns, and uh, it therefore insufficient for their spirit to become calm and to, to concentrate on the liturgy for this uh, requires by itself time. That's why the Lord advises us to come to the church early to attend prayers. Uh, for he says in the book of Proverbs chapter 8 verse 17, and those who seek me diligently will find me. The second reason why we do not feel that we benefit from liturgy is we're not participating in responses. A person may come early to the church but stand there as a spectator. Um, he does not serve as a deacon and neither he share in the congregation's many and profound responses that resulted that by the end of the liturgy such a person does not experience any consolation or spiritual benefit. We have to remember always the truth that the person who comes to the church is in reality one of the important servants of the liturgy. This is confirmed by the absolution for servants which the priestess administers at the beginning of the liturgy, saying, your slaves, Lord, today's servants, the priestess, the deacons, the clerics, all the congregation, and my weakness. The congregation is therefore one of the three important components necessary for liturgy. Um, uh, to be said, these are the priests, the deacons, and the congregation. If one of these is absent, it's impossible to say liturgy. Would that every individual of the congregation who is present at church participate in the responses of the congregation and that they they may respond to them with with their heart and soul and all their emotions so that they may experience the overflowing consolation and the great benefit and the the phrase the congregation says is written before these responses and not the chanter or the teacher only the third reason why we are not or we do not feel that we benefit from the liturgy is that um, lack of concentration or meditation on the responses. Frequently, the responses and the hymns are repeated in a mechanical, routine fashion because they have been learned and repeated often while the mind is somewhere else and is occupied with other matters either in the church or out of it, this, not, this does not lead to the significant benefit. That's why everyone who is in church, whether he is a priest, a deacon, or an ordinary believer, a member of the congregation has to say the prayers with understanding, self-controlled self meditation, and with concentration on what he hears and what she hears, and on what they say so that what the apostle says can apply to them. The apostle say, I will pray with the spirit and I will also pray with understanding. I will sing with the spirit and I will also sing with understanding. That is from 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 15. Thus we will benefit greatly and will experience 
and not inconsiderable uh, consolation at the end. The fourth reason why we are not feeling that we benefit from the liturgy is a preoccupation with administration rather than with the spiritual. Some people pay great attention during liturgy to uh, administrative matters such as selling something. Uh, those items could be church items. We might do it for good, good reasons. It could be collecting the offering or donations or, or organizing those who are praying and making sure they are quiet. During this occupation, they do not give themselves the opportunity of enjoying liturgy and of participating in its responses and hymns, and they do not gain any benefit from attending liturgy. Um, we address to this um, the advices of our Lord Jesus Christ, as he said in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 11, verse 43. This you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. So to this, we add the advice of the preacher who says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. They can therefore uh, carry out their administrative work in church in accordance with the advice of the apostles, who um, he who leads with diligence, as uh, St. Paul said in Romans chapter 12, verse 8, and at the same time, they can share in the prayer and in the worship in accordance to the advices of the apostles in the same chapter, which says, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, continuing steadfastly in prayer. Let us read Romans chapter 12, verse 11 and verse 12 on this. The other reason is saying all liturgy um, in, in Ethiopic. If all liturgy is said in Ethiopic language, there are uh, many complaints and the people object that. They say we do not understand anything, we do not benefit at all, and that's because many do not know the Ethiopic language. The ideal situation is to say part of the liturgy in Amharic and another part in Ethiopic, which is Ge'ez, because it's our original language and our cultural heritage which we cannot dispense with totally now that is restricted to the church only. And we have to be careful to vary the parts that are said in the two language. For example, the prayer of reconciliation can be said, um, for example, either in Engiz or in Amharic one time and uh, sometime in the other one, if we say it in Amharic once, then we can say it in Engiz later on and the section pertaining to the saints could be also said in Giz or in Amharic and so on. So the congregation should try to learn this ancient language, which is the last development of the old Ethiopian language spoken by our ancestors, which is Giz. Those who want to learn will find all the necessary facilities with no uh, appreciable difficulties. There are so many resources available these days in order to, lead to, to learn this ancient, ancient Ethiopian language, which was spoken by our ancestors, and that language is case. The sixth reason why we do not feel we benefit out of attending the Holy Liturgy is we're not partaking of the Holy Communion. Some people attend liturgy as a habit and do not partake of this Holy Sacrament for a period that may extend to, to months or years and maybe a whole lifetime. The church stipulates that all those who attend the liturgy for the faithful or the liturgy for the sanctification of the sacrament have all to be prepared to take the Holy Communion at the end of the liturgy in accordance to the commandments of our righteous Savior. He said, take it, this, all of you, Take drink this, all of you, the one who has confessed and is prepared and who does not partake of this divine sacrament deprives himself of sharing with the faithful and the losses and the losses 
a great opportunity that may not come in his in his or her own way again. And the last and the seventh reason is taking communion without confession. A person might take a holy communion when he has a sin or when she has a sin or when they have sins that they have not confessed and so he, their conscience continues to travel and rebut them, which deprives them of the consolation and the spiritual benefits which they can obtain if they, 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 they really attend liturgy and take the Holy Communion with repentance, purity, and the preparedness. Um, I believe it's uh, better to pause it here. Um, I do really encourage you to share with others and to listen these lessons now and then repeatedly until it sticks into our mind so that we can get the wisdom of God, which is really driving us to the right uh, track for us to attend the Holy Liturgy in a proper order or in a proper way. Now for me here is uh, becoming night, so that this day has come to close. We thank God, our Lord, and we ask that the evening with the night may be sinless and grant this uh, to us, our Savior, we ask you to save us in glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. God bless you. We'll be back to the next lesson, God willing, next week. And have a blessed day or night, depending on the location or the time zone you are in. Lord of peace, is our Jesus Christ, who gave us life by the Holy Cross. We defeated dark and opened our hearts. We call in the light of God, the kind of God, in the light of God. We call in the light of God. God in the light of God, in the light of God, in the light of God, God in the light of God, in the light of God. When the gods appear in the darkest night, we from Mars if we bleed tonight. Sins on the shore, flying through the day. In this peaceful world, we'll send you some prayer. Walk in the light of God, the light of God, in the light of God. Walk in the light of God. Praise the Lord in the